Hello, thank you for joining me. As you cannot see, we're at Marks Tay Station on the main line from London Liverpool Street to Norwich. That way it's looking towards Norwich. And if I pan round, that way it's looking towards London. We are doing, as my hoodie shows, another episode of Miniature Railway Britain. Now the reason I'm here at Marks Tay is I came up on a train from London Liverpool Street. I actually had my first trip on one of these new trains, these new class 720s. Um, the strange thing was, I could not find a litter bin in the train, in the actual passenger saloons. The only place I found a litter bin was in the toilet, not the actual toilet itself, but the room that houses the toilet was the only place I could find a litter bin. So I thought that was a bit odd because I had a coffee, so I had to go to the toilet to dispose of my coffee cup. So we have come here today to catch a train on the branch line which goes to Sudbury. It's known as the Gainsborough line after Thomas Gainsborough. We're going to be getting out at Chapel on Wakes Colne to visit the East Anglian Railway Museum which I've never been to before so I'm very excited about that. But that's got a miniature railway so that's why we're going there. There we are, there's a sign that's quite clear we are at Mark's Tay because the other sign was a bit of a mystery destination. And the station's nice with flowers and everything. There's a modern um, station ticket hall up there so yeah, as I said this is the main line interestingly um, there's not the bridge doesn't have lift so if you um, were in a wheelchair you've got a rather long walk you actually have to go down and across the track as soon as there's not a train coming let's just have a look it's one of the few stations where you can cross the track still um, on a barrow crossing so as you come down to here so that's the main line this is the branch platform where we're going to travel you can see the point, the track points are set, so should a train not stop, it will go that way into a siding and not go onto the main line. So yeah, here you can actually walk across the main line, um, or the branch line rather. This wasn't always a branch line, um, I'll go into a bit more of where it used to go later on, but it's currently now branch line Sudbury. So what I'm going to do now is wait for our train to arrive and then we shall go up to Chapel and Waits Colt. train has arrived so it's a Stadler flirt unit. I did do a tour of the interior of one of these when we went to the Wells Harbour Railway not so long ago. It's quite interesting here because we're seeing it down at ground level rather than a platform level so as you can see that's the pantograph just there. Today it's running purely on diesel because the branch is not electrified so we're using this thing here which isn't quite a loco because you can walk through it so um, to be classed as a loco it has to be a vehicle powers the train which you cannot walk through um, so it is a multiple unit the, it, the only thing I can think of as a loco in the middle um, and I'll probably never get a trip on it I have been in it and um, when we went to a crew see this link on screen was the APT because that had a loco which the passengers can walk through so that's number 327 it's a class 455 we can cross the track in front of the train and uh, we're going to board it so um, I always enjoy these trains because I, I just think they're just something a bit different and a bit fun. So let's get on and um, this is a new track for me as well. Never been on this branch line before. So on we get. Um, just go. I'm not going to do the full tour of the train, but for those of you who wonder what it's like inside the loco thing, there you go. So, so I mean, you can actually walk right through it and you can hear it's fairly noisy as diesel engines hit each side of me and you look through to there and see the rest of the train with the toilet etc but I'm going to go back down this end and sit down and enjoy the journey it goes in about 10 minutes time but I thought I might as well sit and wait at this end because then I can see the main line and you know you never know what might come from I'm not expecting anything that exciting but um, you know watch trains so I'm going to sit down now and enjoy the ride the most exciting thing on the branch is Chapel Viaduct, so I'm looking forward to 
passing over that and seeing the views because we might be in East Anglia but it's not as flat as you think. And the other thing I will say about these trains, this is the furthest south enclave that these Stadler flirts come down to so if you want to go on one of these and don't want to travel too far from London this is the closest to London these ones run. The Norwich and Stance Express units that are all electric obviously they you know they pass through here so you can go on them but if you want to go on a diesel one you don't want to go all the way up to Norwich then this is where you need to come. Anyway I'm gonna sit down and um, we're off to chapel. Well, we've arrived at Chapel and Waits Gold, and there goes our train up to Sudbury, so I'm going to complete my journey later. This might be my next train. We've got, well, actually there's no low coast, so maybe not. Um, so this is obviously the Railway Museum, there's a DMU up there. So, as well as a miniature railway, it's also a standard gauge railway. So I'm um, looking forward to see what we ride on that. Oh, and um, rather amusingly, up there, there's Toby and Henrietta, although Toby seems to have lost his face. Maybe he's just wearing a face covering, I'm not sure. There's a steam loco down there though, I don't think that one's going to go anywhere, a little pecket. So um, that's quite exciting. Not many British railway stations have a plimp steam locomotive. So if you were to arrive by car, you'd arrive here and you see a plimp steam locomotive. And then this is the museum, so what I've got to do now is find out where I go to get into the museum. Because I said I haven't been here before, but it looks very nice and um, just like a nice rural railway station on a branch line. So this line once, um, now it only goes to Sudbury, you could have once gone all the way to Bury St Edmunds and Cambridge. There's also the Colne Valley Railway here, which would have taken you to, um, well, right through to Haverhill. So it was quite an extensive place once, um, or quite an extensive rail network, but now it really is just the branch. So there's a 101 DMU, um, and there's a little shunter up there and can I hear uh, it looks as though um looks like Thomas again with out of faith we'll, we'll go and have a proper look at that later on I think there might be some things to see on this side before I find my way over to the museum so I'm not sure what we're gonna ride on um be nice to go on the but I, somehow I don't think it's gonna go anywhere because the way that shunter's parked we've got here then come to here see the old Ticket office. And uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of a bridge to start with. The old booking hall. So that's where you'd have bought your tickets. And there's an old WH Smith store. So what I'm going to do now, let's see. Let's come out here. Oh, so this is out the front of the station. Get some limp steam loco. I'll find my way into the museum and um, see what we can find. I have boarded that 101 DMU we could see, sitting in first class, very pleasant and um, we get a nice driver's view forward but there isn't actually a driver unfortunately and we're not going for a ride on this train but we are going to go obviously for a ride in the miniature railway because that's what we came here for, we're going to go for a ride on another train so we're going to have to go and find that now but I just thought it would be nice to have a look at the interior of a class 101 DMU and we can kind of compare first generation DMUs with the third generation DMU which we we travelled here on. Um, much 
I mean, I, I do quite like the third generation DMUs on this line. For once, they're a modern train I actually like. And in that first class, if you're not on a local haul train, they're first class and looking to uh, drivers I've used. You know, great, I think. Um, let's have a walk through here. So that's the only first class they have. Um, that would have been the toilet out of use. This is the guard turn, which modern trains don't tend to have. So walk through the guard turn. And then we will walk through, I'm in the second carriage now, walk through here, and then we'll go and walk through the museum, have a look at the museum as we go to the miniature railway. So that's the main line, the other track there. This is the DMU, Ooh, had a whistle. So I think what we might be about to see is a train come past on the main line. So as you can see, it says a light here for the East Anglian Rail Museum and that is exactly what we did. So there's a, a blue locomotive over there. It doesn't have a face. Um, so I think it's well, it's an industrial loco, but it's been playing dressing up with a certain famous blue locomotive, but it's not actually that blue locomotive today. And it looks like it's off with a passenger train. So what we'll do is we'll go down here We'll cross the track here and then we'll wait and see the train come past because I think what he's going to do, what I know what he does, up there and then runs forward down here. So we'll, we'll see that and then we'll continue to look around the museum. go past with its wagons, although the wagons were carrying passengers and I'd ride in the wagons which was also quite fun so here's a bit of footage from the ride I just had on this bit of track. So yeah, it was a bit of a bumpy ride, but good fun. Nice bit of thrash as the loco reversed back up the gradient. Let's go and find this miniature railway. So we shall, well the railway I know is over there somewhere, but first let's have a look at these. They've got some old shops. I remember there used to be some shops a bit like this in Gerald's Cross when you arrived at the railway stations. You went down the slope there used to be a row of just little shops like this. Like if you have a look, this one says toy and games. And I don't know if you can see through the window, there's a couple of old model trains, puzzles, etc. So 
Very nice to see. Phone box. Sweet shop. Clove shop. Ford Anglia. Oh. Down there. He obviously isn't the way we're going to have to go. There's some work going on here. I can see some miniature railway lines. So, I see a little loco, and I just heard a loco. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go down there and find that, have a ride on the train, and um, see where it takes us because it's a new miniature rail for me. I've never been on it. It's been rebuilt fairly recently. So, as I've never been here before, I never went on the previous miniature railway. It's quite a nice scene. No, there's a Locomotive. I like this little plan. This is a German. Um, there's a few of them around. I've never actually travelled on one. I remember seeing one when I was a child, not far from here at the Colne Valley Railway, which is actually part of the railway that this station was once the junction for. Um, I visited there in 2002. So, yeah, 2002. I've got the link on screen now. You can see. Um, so, the junction would have been up there, but if you've got the link on screen now, you can see the video when I visited then. We had a one, two, one to hear me on that time. It's quite a pleasant little scene there. Let's just have a look in this good shed. Seeing as we're here, it looks rather interesting. As we come into here, got a couple of vintage carriages. Very nice little space, this good shed. And a few old signs, such as Harold Wood, which I passed through on my way here. It's on the Great Eastern Main Line. There's the crane, so they would have lifted cargo out the wagons onto this area here. These doors would have been open and it could have been taken away by a lorry, maybe horse and cart, maybe a traction engine. Right now let's go and find the miniature railway. There's also one of the smallest pubs in the country here, it's that one there called Fired Up. Unfortunately it's not open today so I can't have a pint, which I would have done. Talking off the Fired Up, once we've had a ride on the miniature railway, I feel we've been over it, we really should go and walk under it. I'm going to take a slightly unusual route to the railway. I'm going to take this behind this building, so the railway is down there. There's another building with modern railways in, which is quite interesting. It's a mile close there, so that's half a mile from somewhere. That one would have been three quarters of a mile from somewhere. There's a load of old Eastern Region Station signs. Tilbury Riverside, South End, Leon Sea, Chilbury, Westcliff. So they all come from London, Tilbury and South End Line, all of those ones. And there's a few more, Stratford, South End on Sea, in brackets Victoria. We went there last year when we travelled on a dusty bin. Another link on screen, have a look at and um, see the South End Pier Railway. A few little ground signals here. So it's a very interesting museum, you know, worth coming to um, if you're up this way. You can see, get an idea of railways in the eastern region. There, there is, I'm not going to take you in there, but there's all smaller artifacts in there. I always moan about modern stations having ticket barriers, you can't go and see the trains, but here they have some old fashioned ticket barriers. See how that one's closed? But luckily this one's open, so what you'd have done is you'd show the ticket in the window and they'd have opened it. I think one's going one way, one's going the other way. I think we're actually going out the wrong one, but I don't think that's too much. There's some little um, Eastern Region wooden bodied carriages. Have a look in this one, it's like a guard That's interesting, it's got like a little step up. A bit like the modern train that we came on, that had a step up. I suppose the guard could stand here and look ahead at his train. And then if we come out here, um, yeah, so then let's have a quick look in this one. There's the interior of um, how trains used to be, compartment stock. So there's um, children's playground. That building there, the Thompson Centre, has a model railway in it. So um, I'll have a look in there later and I'll, I'll insert a clip now. Oh. 
see one, one of the uh, model railways and then just down here is the station for the miniature railway so just here you can see coming up in the background so what we'll do we'll have a ride on the miniature railway and then as I said I'll finish looking around the museum once I finish looking around the museum I'm going to go for a walk around the Colne Valley and the main object is to walk under the viaduct so this is the miniature railway it's a very pleasant little station it's called Thompson Green that's off the top and who built the B1, I'm not too sure. It looks like a very nice little station. And there's the train. I might have just missed this one. Wind's blowing the gates shut, so I'm gonna wait here. I can see the train go past and we'll get on the next one.
So there's another group of passengers enjoy their ride on the miniature railway. It's time for me to go off for a walk, soon as I'm in the area, I might as well enjoy it. So it's been nice today, I've had two steam locos for haulage, little and large. They were saying though, because um, as you can see it's a fairly short railway, but to me any railway is always good fun, no matter the lake, they would like to extend all round there. So um, we'll have to wait and see. They said that that's their plan, so when I said, well, when that happens, I'll be back to make another Miniature Railway Britain video, because that is how I said the series works. If a railway changes significantly or holds a special event or something like that, then I will come and visit. They said that they're, it'd be quite cool if they could extend down under the viaduct, but I, th I think that might be not so possible, but that really would be quite a cool Miniature Railway. There's an old LNERT coach there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make my way out of the museum. It's funny actually, because I was only here, I can see two steam train on the miniature. I can see the steam loco on the standard gauge. So the steam loco steams off. It's time for me to leave the museum and go for a walk around the Colne Valley. And we're going to go and have a look underneath that viaduct. Well, as promised, I said I should come down to the viaduct, and here we are below it. That's looking north that way, towards Sudbury, and that way's looking towards Mark's Tay. Well, that last shot didn't go quite to plan. I watched it back just to see what the wind interference was like, and um, found myself upside down. But I thought it was quite funny that first bit. Anyway, so as for the viaduct itself, it's rather big and vast, and it basically towers above the village. This is the village of Chapel. I'm making my way to the railway station because what I did, I then went to the other side of the viaduct, watched the train heading south over the viaduct. So there's that picture now. Or video, should I say? And now I'm making my way back through the village to the railway station. What I'm going to do, I'm going to head north, uh, finish my journey to Sudbury just to complete the track. I was going to get out in Sudbury and go and have a look around Sudbury, but because I've opted to do such a long walk, I think I'll have to leave that for another time. But one other thing I could not end without showing you is the River Colne itself, which must be here. So it's rather a small river here. This isn't the same River Colne that goes through Watford, so not to be confused. Although not that far away, there are actually two River Colnes, the viaduct then towers above it. So the whole point of the viaduct is to take the railway line over the Colne Valley. We get to the main road here, it goes to Halstead where it um, was one of the places which was served on the on the Colne Valley Light Railway which ran from here. One day I'll have to do a video perhaps on try and walk the old track bed or what there is to walk of it. That's Station Road there so that's where I've got to go. Very Essex feel this village has. Well that's because it's in Essex I suppose that explains it. Anyway, I'll leave you with one last view of the viaduct before I head up to the railway station. said it did want to carry on before but exploring where the line used to go is a video for another day so it is just a single track single platform station there is only one track the whole line apart from the connection with the East Anglian Rail Museum it does look like though Sudbury is probably a rather nice town to look around so another day we'll do that I have planned to do that today possibly not in the video but in my own time have a look around Sudbury but I decided to go for a walk around the Colm Valley so you know I can't do everything. The train's too long for the platform. Because the previous trains, when it was a 156, would have refitted in here nicely. So what I suppose I might as well do is get back on the train, ticked off this station, I've ticked off the line. The only station I haven't been on the platform of on this line is Brewers. Walk through the um, funny loco thing and um, we'll go sit at the front of the train and enjoy the ride back. So I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. 
please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from at the end of the Sudbury branch at Sudbury, on the train waiting to go back to Mark's Day and in London. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.